Depending on the value of your sky will determine which pencil you will begin with. If the values in your sky are very light, then begin shading with a 4 h pencil. If the values in your sky are darker, you may begin with a 2 h pencil. The goal for the sky is to create a smooth transition or gradation of values. To do this, we have to build our values slowly. To create a gradation of values, you will begin by drawing hatching marks and pressing as lightly as you can with your chosen 2 h or 4 h pencil. As you make your marks, there are a couple things you need to make sure you're doing. The first one is start your marks outside the border and have them end once they touch an object in the middle ground. Keep your marks close together, leaving little to no gaps between each mark to create a solid fill. Third thing, draw with the tip of your pencil, not the side. If you draw with the side, you will end up getting these fuzzy marks instead of crisp, clean marks. And we don't want a furry sky, so keep the pencil elevated. Fourth thing you want to do is keep your wrist straight with your arm. When you draw your marks, move your whole arm to create a consistent straight line. Don't bend the wrist when you draw or else your marks will curve. You really need to avoid drawing curvy hatching lines in the sky as this will make your sky look like your landscape is inside a snow globe. We want our sky to look smooth and flat, which is why our marks should be as straight as possible. If you have gaps between your lines, go back to the area you just shaded and fill in the gaps before moving on. And always build a solid foundation before moving on to other layers. For that first layer that I had shaded a couple layers ago, you wanna make sure you keep it as light as possible. Once that layer is complete, you can cross hatch by drawing marks in different directions. With the second layer, or th third or fourth layer, you can always press a little bit harder than the one you did before, but not too much harder. The next layer should only be a shade darker than the previous one. Now, to have an impressive and realistic sky, it takes patience to develop your layers. If you rush to get these darker values in, you will end up with your sky looking too rough and void of any smooth transitions. So as you begin to fill the composition, take note about a couple other things to avoid. One, never begin your marks in the middle of the area you're drawing. Have them begin outside the border or right at the edge and end on another object. If you would begin your marks in the middle of the sky, you will end up getting all of these dark lines. We tend to press a little harder when we be begin a line and naturally press lighter as we end one. To avoid having too many dark value line bits kind of floating in our work, that's why you want to start shading at the border or beyond the border and then draw in. Also, second, do not scribble back and forth. It may look like I'm doing that because this is a really fast um, speed drawing, but I am lifting up my pencil after every mark I make and then placing it back down again. And then the third thing you want to avoid is do not smudge the drawing with your finger or hand. To avoid creating smudging, place a scrap piece of paper underneath your hand so you do not smear the work. Now, once you've shaded to the darkest point with your 2H or 4H pencil, you can move on to the next pencil. Because I began with a 2H pencil, the next pencil I would use is the HB. If you began with a 4H, you would use a 2H next. Remember, the H means hard and the B means black. The more graphite you have in the lead, the darker your marks will be. The more clay you have in the lead, the lighter the marks will be. That's why we begin with the 2H pencil, so we can build our lighter marks easily instead of struggling with an HB or 2B from the beginning. The HB will allow me to add in the darker values. Take notice on a couple of things now that I'm beginning to shade the darker values in with my darker HB pencil. I'm not shading all the way down to my lightest section. Second, I am pressing harder near the top of my sky and lifting off the pr pressure of my pencil as I shade closer to my mountains. Third, when I shade horizontally, I am spending more time to make sure my marks stay straight and are not drawn on a curved arc. I am also making sure they are close together. Fourth, same as before, with each additional layer, I am only pressing slightly harder to create a slightly darker value than the layer I drew before. Fifth, gradually build up to your darker values. And sixth, shade the sky. Um, shading the sky took me a solid 45 minutes to do just to get a smooth gradation of values and a full range of values that matched my photograph. 
So most importantly, pay attention to your photograph as you draw. 80% of the time should be spent looking at the photo and 20% should be spent glancing at your drawing. Especially towards the end of this guy, I had to make sure I was analyzing the value placements in my photograph. So as I was adding in the lightest or the last darkest values, I was making sure that they were being drawn in the proper place. Additionally, you may notice the implication of wind in your sky due to the nature of your surrounding clouds. My sky looks like it is on a, sl a slight slant where there is a diagonal line that starts at the lower left-hand side of the mountains and angles up toward the right-hand corner of my composition. To show this implication of wind, I am making sure that the direction of my marks and the last layer I shade will be drawn on an angle to capture the same angle I am seeing in my photograph. Once you've built up all of the values in your sky, you have the full range of values seen in the photograph and the values are placed in the proper spot and you have a good gradation or smooth transition of values, then you can begin placing in the clouds. If you've lost the placement of the clouds you initially drew in, that's okay. I can no longer see my initial contour drawing of clouds in my landscape because I have shaded over them. So I have to visually cite them in by comparing their placement to other things in my landscape. Prepare your needed eraser to where you form it to reflect the tip of a pencil. Then begin with the most detailed or largest cloud in your work and have the other clouds be placed in after that. If you have wispy and soft edges on your clouds, then use your kneaded eraser to place them in. If you would happen to have big fluffy clouds with crisp edges, you can begin erasing your clouds with a white Statler eraser. Sometimes though, even if I have clouds that are super fluffy, I still begin with a kneaded eraser because I feel like I have more control over that tool. As you erase with your kneaded eraser, the tip that is erasing is going to be covered in graphite and will not erase as much as it normally did when you first formed the tip because it's picking up that graphite as you erase. This can actually be helpful because if parts of your clouds are a darker gray, taking a kneaded eraser with a dirtier tip will make sure that only minor amounts of graphite will be removed from the paper. So this is a great tool to use in those areas where you want those like middle grays but not fully dark to match the sky. You can also use this dirty tip to begin blending and pushing graphite around to help create smoother transitions. After you've roughed in the shape of your clouds, you can begin shading around the edge of your clouds to give them more definition. However, as you can see here, I haven't quite built up the lightest values that I'm seeing with the clouds yet. So I'm going in with my Statler eraser to define the edges that are a little bit crisper, but to also pull out those really, really bright white areas. The one thing that you want to be cautious of when you're using the Statler eraser is that when you erase with it, it's going to leave those little tidbits behind. To clean them off your paper, you have to blow them away or pick them up with the kneaded eraser. Do not take your hand and swipe it across the sky because then you're going to smear all of this work that you've just done. So now that I've roughed in the shape of my clouds, you can um, and I can begin shading around the edge of the clouds to give them more definition. I accidentally began this with my HB pencil and it was making my marks way too dark. So once I switched to my 2H pencil, then I was having way more success and I wasn't having to erase my marks as often. To crisp up your edges around your clouds, shade in small hatching marks, but make sure you do not outline your clouds as, this, clouds as this will make them look flat. The small hatching marks should blend into the rest of the sky. If anything begins to look like an outline, lift up the graphite in those areas with a clean kneaded eraser tip. And take your time with the clouds. They're not going to appear perfect in a few minutes. You may have to develop them for a while before they begin looking like believable clouds, but be okay with your clouds not being as accurate as the picture. Remember that clouds are constantly changing and moving in the sky. If you get the general shape in and the values correct, then your sky should look fine. The contour of my clouds do not perfectly match the clouds in my photograph, but the values are very similar as well as their placement. So I'm fine with leaving my sky how it is and moving on to the next portion of my landscape.